to the place where police dogs are trained, where they learn how to rescue lost children and give directions and drive police cars and write speeding tickets and, and all those sort of things. I can't wait. Bobby, <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, they're police dogs, aren't they? I thought they do everything that police do, only slightly lower to the ground. No, Bobby, police dogs have completely different jobs to do. And you know what they mainly use to do those jobs? No, Constable Brian, what? I'll give you a clue, it's right in front of you. Car bonnet? No. Traffic light? No, your nose, Bobby. Police dogs do a lot of work with their noses. Hell. Well, that's what we're gonna go and find out. Canines, do you want a purpose in life? Do you want to help people in their times of need and benefit society? If you're under one year old, a German Shepherd or Labrador and have a good, obedient disposition, then we want you for the police dog unit. As well as protecting society from criminals, you'll help sniff out explosives, guns, and the occasional lost child. Join now and make a real difference. Boy, we're here. Oh well, look over there, it's an obstacle course and there's a big field to run around in. Oh, and there's a power pole with some really interesting smells on it. Hey Constable Brian, I'm just gonna go and have a look. Hang on Bob, there's somebody here to meet us. But Constable Brian, it looks really cool. I'm only gonna go over there for a minute. Just wait a minute Bob, I'll please. be right back. Hey Bob, do you know the first thing police dog handlers look for in a good police dog? No. Obedience. Oh, or at least I would go over there if I was a badly behaved dog, but I'm not. That was just an example of what not to do. Right, Constable Brian? Right. This is my good friend, Constable Dan. He's a police dog handler and he's going to show us around today, Bobby. G'day, Bobby. G'day. My name's Bobby and I want to be a police dog. But if I want to be a police dog, do I have to shave my fur off as well? That's called style, Bobby. Oh, great then. Where do I sign up? Unfortunately, Bobby, it's not as simple as that. You're a bit young, but in a few months' time, we'll be glad to have you. And then there'll be a training period of up to nine months. Nine months? But that's... Plus three cans of jelly meat, divide by a dog roll, carry the one, take a nibble off the corner, about six dog years? Six years of dog school? Yeah, I'd say you've got a bit of growing up to do, mate. Oh. Actually, it's not that bad, Bobby. It's quite a lot of fun. Do you want to see some of the police dogs doing it? Oh, do I? <laughs> training is actually broken up into three blocks of roughly three months each. We start with basic obedience training and simple tracking. This is like the dog's ABCs and gives us a good base to start from. Constable Brian told me that police dogs do most of their work with their nose. Was that true? Yes Bobby, I don't need to tell you this, but a dog's sense of smell is an incredible thing. Humans have five million smell receptors for smelling the difference between various smells. Five million? Wow, that's a lot. Mm. Dogs have 220 million smell receptors. Wow, I'm a lean, mean, sniffing machine. Yes, you certainly have a strong smell, Bob. You mean sense of smell, Constable Brian? Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Anyway, the police can use that strong sense of smell to help us in lots of different ways. Police dogs can be trained to find lots of things, from explosives, to guns, to drugs. Let's try a little experiment. I have here four pairs of socks. What? Are your feet cold? <laughs> no, one of them belongs to Constable Brian Bobby, and I'd like you to tell me which one. That's very good, Bobby. 
A human would have a lot of trouble recognising a person just by sniffing their socks. I don't know. <coughs> Those are pretty ripe. Who got them with Brian? Went with laundry day. <coughs> hey. Well, you've got his scent. Now I think he wants you to find him. Right oh <coughs> Brian. Well done, Bobby. That's how tracking works. That was easy. But next time, can we do it without your socks? <coughs> I'm still trying to get the burning out of my nostrils. <coughs> hey, you! Wow! This is so cool! The second stage of training, Bobby, is advanced tracking, obedience and agility. We need police dogs to be able to handle all sorts of situations and environments, from the bush to ruined buildings. Whoa! Can I try that, Constable Brian? Mm. Oh, come on, Constable Brian. Mm -hmm. I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. Watch this, Constable Brian. Oh, Bobby. Maybe you should wait a couple of months, mate. Oh my head. So what's the third stage, Mr Handler? The third stage is advanced tracking and teamwork. The dogs and their trainers get used to always working together towards a goal. They get very familiar with each other and become the best of friends. Just like we do, eh, Constable Brian? We always work together to help kids stay safe. Exactly, Bobby. I think you're well on your way to becoming a fine police dog, Bobby. You really think so? Thanks, Mr Handler. I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Cool. Wow, I never knew dogs could be so useful. Dogs like feeling useful, eh, Bobby? Oh, yeah, we love it. And we love scratches behind the ears and tummy rubs and long walks. So what are some of the things dogs don't like then, Bob? Hmm. The thing is, Constable Brian, dogs are like people. We're all different, and we're all going to react to people in different ways. Me, I love hugs and play fights and a bit of rough and tumble, but other dogs may not. You have to approach dogs in different ways. So can you give us some examples then, Bob? Well, one thing we really don't like is surprises, especially if it's from somebody we don't know. But that's little Jamie, you know her. We're just pretending, Constable Brian. Oh, sorry, carry on. The first thing to remember is that you should never approach a strange dog. Even if its owner is around, ask first. Even then, you should move slowly. Most dogs love meeting new people, but we like to do it slowly. You know, get to know you a little bit. So let us come to you, rather than the other way around. Now this is dog language, for I don't feel very friendly right now, so you should keep your distance, even if we're wagging our tail while we're barking or growling. She knows what to do, she's showing that she's not scared, although I'm only pretending, Constable Brian, I'm not really angry at her. You should also leave dogs alone when they're eating or sleeping, especially when we have a bone. So the things you need to remember are to never approach a strange dog. Always ask the owner first. Move slowly and confidently and treat dogs kindly and gently and leave dogs alone when they're eating or sleeping. But do you know one of the main rules for dealing with dogs? What's that, Bob? You should always reward a dog when they've been good. It's called positive reinforcement. Buckle up, Bobby, and we'll see about a treat. Oh, goody. It's been a long time since I've had dog biscuit and jelly meat ice cream. Hey, don't forget to visit our website at www.brianandbobby.co.nz and that's Brian with a Y. Association with Blue Light Ventures and Trillion Trust.